Well, hello everyone. This is our power horse generator that we use for our RV. It'll pretty much run everything we need to in the RV at sea level. But if you look at the manual for this generator, it says for anything over 5,000 feet above sea level, you need a high altitude kit. And since our property in Colorado is right about 9,000 feet above sea level, we definitely needed to install the high altitude kit. And I did install that on this unit and it allowed the generator to run, uh, but it didn't run great. And I'll elaborate on that one. So when we were there, this generator typically here at sea level, or we're at like five or 600 feet above sea level here in Texas, and this thing will run the entire RV, both air conditioners, hot water heater, you know, unless everything is just triggering right at the same time, it's good. Even, even running the microwave um, with other devices seems to be fine. Now, again, if everything's surging at the exact same time, you're probably gonna run into overload, but in general, it usually does pretty well for us. When we were in Colorado, we were only able to pretty much run one device at a time. So if we had the air conditioner on, which we didn't do much because we're up pretty high, but if we had the air conditioner on and you kicked off the microwave, it would overload this generator. Or if you had the air conditioner and you turn the hot water heater on, which we have set to electric, uh, it would overload the generator. So we had to balance out what we were gonna use at what time uh, when we were using the RV, which is not bad. I mean, it really wasn't that big of a problem for us, but the, the available wattage from this generator was greatly reduced. It should have at least provided us 2,000, 2,200 watts and I would say 1500 was about its max. So as I pull out this high altitude kit, I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit more with the jets and maybe what you could do to overcome that. Um, of course, you know, use jets at your own risk on what you're putting in there. Basically, you're leaning out the, uh, the carburetor to substitute for the limited amount of oxygen in the air. All right, but to remove this high altitude kit, I've pretty much got to remove this panel right here off the side and uh, access the carburetor. And we don't have to pull the carburetor all the way off, but we do have to get underneath it, pull the bowl off to get to the jet. So I'm gonna show you the pieces that we need to pull off. All right, so to take this side panel off, we pretty much have to take out these two Phillips head screws. You have to pop this up a little bit. There's a little rubber tab that's on the bottom of this lip that goes into that hole. So you just pop that up and then you take out those two screws. Now the little tool kit that came with the generator, uh, which is this, this screwdriver, this little uh, spark plug changing uh, socket, I guess you could say, came with it. The two spark plugs, the spare spark plugs and the gap tool did not. And I just bought that to have extras in Colorado. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Phillips head screwdriver that it came with and I'm gonna go ahead and take these two screws off so I can expose what's behind this panel. All right, so after unscrewing these two screws, they have little holders on them to keep the screws from actually coming out. So you don't have to try to pull them out. They're, they're held in place. You lift up this and then you pull it. Now there's two little pieces, little gaskets on the side here that you'll see when I get this off that help hold this in place. So as I pull that off, you can see right there, there's a little rubber o-ring on each side and those hold in these little plugs that are there and that exposes this side of the motor and the generator so your carburetor is right here that's the bottom bowl that silver piece you see and then the carburetor goes up here all the way up to the cable so we're going to go ahead and take that bottom bowl off and pull the jet and put the other jet back in now to pull that bowl off, you're gonna have to get back here. And if you can see over here, there is, this is a 10 millimeter bolt, if that can focus where I've got my finger. And that's the bottom of the bowl. That's holding the bowl on the carburetor on. So there's gas in there. Uh, you're gonna want to be ready that it's gonna spill out uh, and make sure that you have the switch on the generator turned to off, which it should be already but you wanna make sure that's there so that way it doesn't let more fuel just keep pouring out of the carburetor. So again, that bolt right there, 10 millimeter, I'm gonna take that off and that bowl, that whole silver bowl should just come straight down off of the carburetor. 
All right, so you can see the bowl now is off. Now, again, remember that this bowl, it sits on the bottom of the carburetor, it holds the fuel. So when you go to take this bolt out the bottom, right, this is the bolt, the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the thing in the bottom. As soon as you start loosening this, fuel is gonna start coming out of this bowl. Now, this one has a little drain screw that lets you drain out what's in the bottom of the bowl down this tube, which one drains out the bottom of the generator housing. Um, or if you just take the bolt out like I did, it's gonna drain down the generator housing anyway. And there's a little drain on the bottom of there. You just pull the plug if you have uh, too much fuel or anything leaked in there. So now that the bowl's down, and if you look in here, you're gonna have, all right, so if you can see now, the bottom of the carburetor is exposed. So if you see that white piece of plastic there, that's the float uh, that sits inside the bowl and floats on the fuel. And that um, metal circle that's threaded that's sticking down, that's the housing that holds the jet and the flute tube that's in there. So basically we have to put a flathead screwdriver in there and unscrew the jet that's holding in that flute and replace that with either the high altitude jet if you're putting that in, or in my case, I'm pulling the high altitude out, I'm putting the original jet back in. All right, so when we're trying to get that jet out of that tube there, you really want the right size screwdriver. So you want a flathead screwdriver that is not so big that when you put it in there, it starts tearing up those threads, but you want it big enough to where when you put it in there, it grabs a good bite on the head of that jet. So you'll see what I mean when I take the, the jet out, but it needs to be an appropriately sized flathead screwdriver. Now that I've got the jets out, or the jet itself, this is the screwdriver I use, and you, if you can look at it, you'll see why I used it. It's, it's just big enough. It's actually a little small. I wish I had a little bit bigger flathead to have pulled that out, but it is big enough to go into that groove there, but again, not too big to tear up the threads on the side of the uh, carburetor. Now, if you look really closely, I don't know if it'll focus good enough for that, but you can see this has a 72 on it right there. This is the high altitude jet that they send me and then this is the part number of the whole high altitude kit uh, they said disregard the model because the model it basically it works for many different generators but this is the one they said it was this is the part number uh, that they gave me and basically it comes with a new ring seal around the bowl this is a new gasket for the uh, bolt uh, that like you see here that goes in the bottom and I didn't use either one of those because the gaskets are still great on the carburetor. This is the little flute is what I call it that goes up above the jet. So basically when you take the jet out, this should also fall out with it. If this doesn't fall out, it may be clogged and you may want to stick something in there. If you look at this, there's holes. Like that's the part that sticks up into the carburetor and, and shoots out the gas. Uh, but this is the part that goes flush and touches up against the jet. Um, you can usually reach up in there with like a paper clip or something and pull this out if it doesn't want to come out But if your carburetor is clean, it should fall right out So again the one on the left here, that's a 72. This is the high altitude kit jet. This one is a 76 It's the one that actually came with the generator and as you can see I used a screwdriver might have been this one that wasn't quite big enough and it kind of beat that up when I was getting it out and that's the reason you want to use a properly sized screwdriver to get that out so now I'm gonna put this jet back in with the flute and stick that back up into the, uh, the line on the carburetor so I pulled that black hose out of the way so you can see the carburetor a little better again that's the the place right there where these uh, this flute and this jets gonna go this flute right here is gonna go in there just like this, straight up that way. And then underneath it is gonna go this jet with the flathead side down. So the flathead part right here is gonna to touch the bottom of the flute. This is gonna screw back in this direction into the carburetor. All right, and so as you can see here, I got the screwdriver and I push that in. You don't wanna tighten these jets really tight. You wanna, you wanna screw it in until it pretty much stopped and maybe give it just a hair of a turn to make sure it's snug but you don't want those in there super tight I mean then they're really hard to remove later and you end up tearing them up or get them stuck in there so you just want them snug enough where they're gonna stay in there 
But uh, so now that I've got that jet back in, really it's just reassembling everything. I'm gonna put uh, the bowl back up on there and uh, the bolt back up underneath the bowl. And that should be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this and we're gonna test it. All right, so now I got the bowl installed. And again, talking about tightening that, that bolt that goes up there to hold that bowl on, if you can see it, don't over tighten, just snug it down, but that's it. Don't, don't strip the threads, don't tighten the heck out of it. Uh, because you know, these, these aren't super strong carburetors or the metal that they used to make these. So you don't want to strip the threads out and everything. So just make it nice and snug and you'll be good. All right, so now that the bowl is attached, the jet's in there, um, we're gonna go ahead and put this side panel back on and then I'm gonna try to crank it. All right, side panel's back on and we'll try to crank it. Again, I need to take this jet and I'm gonna put it back in the packaging here where I have the seals uh, because next time we go above 5,000 feet, I'm gonna need this to put it in and uh, make it operate. So keep that in a safe place. And let's try to turn this thing on. So, first of all, we're gonna have to turn it to choke. Uh, that turns the fuel on. And it may take a second for some gas to get in there, but let's see. So we turn the fuel on. On these, you turn the ESC throttle off when you first crank it, and then you go to crank it. Wow, that was uh, pretty good. Turn the choke off. So anyways, uh, hopefully that helps someone that wants to know about how to change that carburetor uh, to run at high altitude. No reason to keep running that. All right, so if this video helped you understand what you got to do with that high altitude kit uh, for your generator, please give it a thumbs up. If you would, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's that little red button that's down below the video. Absolutely free. Until the next video, y'all take care.